So building on the success of the Mark II side tank locomotive, Mahmoud introduced a saddle tank version as a limited edition, the Diamond Jubilee locomotive, available in both gauge O and gauge 1, a limited edition of 100, and this one is number 14. That happens to be the same locomotive that Mahmoud have demonstrated in one of their YouTube videos. It was delivered to the original owner in March 2012 and I have uh, recently obtained this via the famous online auction website and so this review will take into account that it is second hand accordingly. The familiar Mahmoud polystyrene insert for the box holding the locomotive and the supplied accessories. If you do use these polystyrene boxes for storing your locomotive, you do need to ensure that uh, after running the locomotive you need to wipe it down to remove as much oil as possible and then provide some form of membrane within the, the polystyrene so that the oil doesn't soak through to the polystyrene and contaminate it as can be seen in this example here. Paperwork included with this locomotive includes the operating instructions for the Mark 1 and 2 oscillating locomotives, the leaflet for the gas control and a signed Queen's Diamond Jubilee Locomotive Limited Edition certificate stating that this is number 14 of 100. The locomotive comes supplied with steam compound oil, lubricating oil, a water funnel and an EN417 gas cartridge canister adapter. So the Diamond Jubilee saddle tank locomotive uses the same chassis as the Mark II locomotive. It's the same cab assembly with the cab roof and essentially it's the same boiler as well. Although on this one uh, the false steam dome is actually slightly wider uh, than the steam dome on my Mark II. But that may be because my Mark II was one of the original batch produced. The only difference that I've managed to find on the chassis between the Mark II and this locomotive is this. So instead of having one long open air slot in the chassis, the saddle tank locomotive actually has two slots with this small tab in between them, presumably as uh, some form of strengthening up the chassis frames. So the saddle tank is secured to the locomotive, it's got a front plate there which is semicircular, unlike the Mark II which is rectangular. The front of the saddle tank has one rivet each side holding that onto the front plate. Similarly on the cab front there is a rear plate which is riveted onto the cab front and then the saddle tank is riveted to that plate by one rivet as well. So depending on how strong these rivets have been a compressman fitting this does allow for a slight misalignment of the bodywork and I don't know the history of the running of this locomotive whether it's actually had a lot of uh, derailments but certainly the uh, bodywork is loose at the rear of the saddle tank on this side and can be pushed down. Really the cab body needs to be fixed to the cab floor uh, to prevent that. You don't have this problem with the Mark II side tank locomotive because the side tanks are actually spot welded or tack welded to the cab sides so you, there is no possibility of a an al misalignment on the bodywork there. Uh, this is the big question that everybody's been asking. Where does the hot air and the burnt gas 
go. So here on the saddle tank there is a small semicircular cutout just behind the chimney, a circular hole which surrounds the safety valve, another circular hole which surrounds the false steam dome and then there is a cutout which goes around the regulator housing at the rear of the boiler. But as you may be able to see in this video, the top of the saddle tank is very close to the top of the boiler here. So there isn't really a lot of open space for the hot air and burnt gas to escape. This does lead to some problems with the burner setting. As unlike the Mark II where if you turn the gas valve up too much the blue flames tend to lick up over the top of the boiler towards the false steam dome. On the saddle tank the flames will come up the side of the combustion chamber walls and will then lick on the side of the bottom of the saddle tank. And as we can see in a minute uh, this has happened to this locomotive when it's been running previously. And here you can see uh, the paintwork on the bottom lug of the saddle tank has uh, been burnt by that burner flame uh, creeping out from the combustion chamber. So you need to be really careful with the setting of the gas valve um, and I recommend that you mark the gas valve uh, with some form of line so you know where it is. And I found in use that uh, the gas valve setting should be no more than a quarter open. When you're running the locomotive in reverse, are you going backwards? I found that the gas burner gets affected possibly by the air flow going through the cab as the cab's not fixed at the front uh, to the cab floor and so that's affecting the flame on the gas burner and so when running backwards I need to turn the gas down a little bit more. Whilst developing the new Thomas Telford locomotive, Mammoth have become aware of a design fault with their current ceramic burners where they have a venturi at the end of the gas air tube which goes into the burner like this. And it's believed that this is uh, accelerating the gas air flow too much that it's not burning correctly. By opening up that venturi, Mammoth have now managed to increase the efficiency of these burners by another 100%. And this modification will be introduced to all ceramic burners that are now produced from now on. One concern uh, that we had with the saddle tank locomotive is the type of decal that Mammoth have used on the side of the saddle tank. It was not obvious from the website photographs what material that it's actually made of and if it had been the same plastic that they use on the previous William locomotives or the Mark I and Mark II locomotives then that plastic would have melted or badly burnt and damage the paintwork as this saddle tank does get very hot due to the very small air slots that are available on the top for the hot air and the burnt gas to escape. Fortunately the decal has been made of a metalled material uh, which is uh, the silver background there that's been over painted with red to produce the printing and the design and if you look very closely at this one just to the left of where it says Mammoth, you will see it's actually been scraped slightly, removing the red paint and underneath you'll see the silver background. So these decals seem to be quite capable of coping with the heat that is generated by this locomotive, which is good news.